And let's work our way through some of yeah, the excerpts. Yeah. It's only a 15-page decision, which is good. And it's not filled with jargon and legalese, although crap. it is still written right. as a legal document, and it would be very intimidating for the average person. What I think we want to do here today and what we're going to try to do is help everyone out there understand what she found and what she didn't find and what it all means. And frankly, she found a lot of stuff that the commissioner could use to increase the suspension if that's what he chooses to do. We begin, and we're going to go through this somewhat methodically. Let's see, if, let's see if that works. But this comes from one of the early pages of the decision. And she explains that based upon the record that was compiled in connection with the NFL's allegation that Deshaun Watson, a player in the L, violated in the NFL violated three provisions of the policy by engaging in sexual assault, conduct that poses a genuine danger to the safety and well-being of another person, and three, conduct that undermines or puts at risk the integrity of the NFL. Let me just stop there. The, those are the three provisions that I thought the NFL would focus on, because when you look at the bullet points, those are the three that potentially fit. Sexual assault, obviously right and then number two and number three are the catch-all provisions yeah that are at the bottom of the personal conduct policy basically if there's nowhere else where you can fit the misconduct if there's no other category into which it neatly and easily yeah and legally, finds a home yeah right you can say poses a genuine danger to the safety and well-being of another or it's conduct that undermines or puts at risk the integrity of the nfl now those three things are important because she ultimately found that he did those three things. She found at the end of the day that he did it, that he was accused of it, and he did it. Sexual assault? Yes. Conduct that poses a genuine danger to the safety and well-being of another person? Yes. Conduct that undermines or puts at risk the integrity of the NFL? Yes, in part because he was saying, hey, I'm the quarterback of the Houston Texans. Right. Right. He's holding himself out sure. as a member of the NFL to set these massages yeah, up. He's undermining right. the integrity of the NFL by going around saying, I'm the Texans quarterback, setting up the massages and having them become attempted sexual encounters as she found. That's the thing. She found that he did it. And that was kind of what I thought yesterday, Chris, when you're going to suspend the guy six games, you must have found he did something. She found that he was guilty as charged by the NFL factually. The question was, how does she get from those findings to six games yes, and not right. what the NFL wanted? Question. We'll get to that. Yeah. But the thing to remember, for anyone out there that's wondering just basically what the hell happened here, she found, Chris, that he did it. She found that he is guilty. Yeah, no no doubt about it. That's That's the thing that jumps out about this more than anything, and I think that's where – you know, I guess when you just think about past NFL procedures that might be similar to this or players in trouble, uh, that's where it just is confusing as someone who's followed the NFL there. You know, those three things that you mentioned, some of the other things that I know were that I talked about a few minutes ago that we're going to unpack, that's where you just go, wait, the NFL, who's, you know, been pretty strict with any player conduct here, and then here we are with, you know, finding, you know, guilt, in, in, in three huge categories along you know, alongside some other things there, and it's just six games. I think that's where, you know, a guy like me who's in the weeds, like you in the NFL, I'm, I'm confused about it. I know the normal fan who's just going, wait, six games for 20, 30 girls, 24 women? What? That doesn't make sense. So they're confused about it. And then, of course, we got the other side that, you know, doesn't really want to see it that way. And they think this is like a mass conspiracy that all these women got together and, and framed Deshaun Watson. Now, this is an important point as well. Yeah. And the language, obviously, the words that are used can be a little bit sensitive because of the nature of what's gone on here. But these are the words that came from the decision. And I think they're very important. Let me set this up by saying that Judge Robinson pointed out at page six of the decision that the NFL had the burden to prove by a preponderance of the evidence. That was the standard she used, more likely than not. She yeah. had to believe it was more likely than not that it occurred that, number one, Deshaun Watson, during these massages where he tried to get them to become sexual encounters, intended to cause contact between his genitals and 
the massage therapist. Number two, he did so for a sexual purpose. And number three, he knew that such contact was unwanted. And one of the big issues here, and again, this gets a little indelicate, but it goes to the heart of what was happening. He's getting a massage, and while he's getting a massage, he has an erection. He's getting aroused, right. And that becomes the... The gateway the starting to make point, the next move. Exactly. Right. For something more. Right. So that's why I say that because this passage that we have on the screen is critically important to what I'm going to say after that. Mr. Watson has not testified that he had erections and inadvertently touched the therapist here. Instead, he has categorically denied the allegations against him, including that he ever developed an erection during a massage. It is difficult to give weight to a complete denial when weighed against the credible testimony of the investigators who interviewed the therapist and other third parties. Right. And some of the third parties were the women, some of the women who came out and supported, supported him. him. Remember right. when that happened? I know. And yes. said, oh, right. yes, when we gave him massages, he had erections. Right. So th this is this is how. Let alone the text messages, right, from some of the people that they sent to people right, right after those third parties as well, right? right. That, but they had that evidence as well. But this is how, when you're the person who is charged with figuring out what happened, this is how you separate truth from not truth. You've got credible testimony from multiple people pointing in one direction. And then you've got Deshaun Watson with a categorical denial of any misconduct. And we heard the talking points. I never harassed anyone. I never insulted anyone. I yeah. never disrespected anyone. Right? He That was his little card that he kept reading anytime he was asked the question. Categorical denial, did nothing wrong, and even denied ever having a single time during a massage an erection. Ooh. And again, it's weird to be talking about these things, yeah. but this goes to the heart of what she found. And in the most delicate way possible, she found that he was lying. And see... I think it's important for us to call it that because I think Roger Goodell will call it that. I this do is too. Tom Brady destroying his cell phone in 2015. Yeah. This is the thing that allows the enforcer to do some enforcing. And I know from my perspective, I get pissed off when I see someone has lied because it's hard enough to figure out what's happened in contested cases without somebody lying. And if you show up and you testify and you lie, no matter how cartoonish it may be, no matter how implausible it may be, you have still lied. Deshaun Watson lied in the assessment of Judge Sue L. Robinson. He lied about his categorical denial. He lied about never having an erection during a massage. He lied to cover it all up. To me, that's a huge deal. I agree, and I, too. And I say that because yeah. it's going to be a huge deal to Roger Goodell, and I'm not going to be surprised, Chris, at the end of the day, it's 17 games. Yeah, I'm Goodell's not either. Goodell's going to get what he wants Yeah, because he's got it. There's the smoking gun. Deshaun Watson went in there, testified, and lied on the most important matters in this entire situation. Yeah, well, I mean, you know he lied there, right? And, and of course, you know, Judge Sue Robinson lays it out. And but So then where do you believe him with anything? Uh, that, that's, I think that's exactly. the problem. Where, so, oh, wait, in the next paragraph, I'm supposed to believe him there? You know, that's the problem that Roger Goodell is going to fall into here. And, you know, it's 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 a it's it's a tough it's a tough thing. It really is. There's no doubt about it. I don't know if I think it goes 17, Mike, but I think it will go 10 to 12. You think it might go 17 after all of this, you know, said and done. That's kind of where you're feeling this after after yesterday. I, I just think that once Goodell understands the import of that passage, I think he gets sufficiently upset and and through his people, whoever crafts his decision, yeah. they will they will be far more blunt than she was. I'm surprised she wasn't more upset about it. I am too. I, I, I'm yeah. upset about it. Right. Because we're trying to get to the truth here. We're trying to get to the truth. I remember when Martha Stewart was prosecuted for lying to the FBI. And I remember the prosecutor conducting a press conference saying, look, this is like an umpire trying to see what happened at home plate and somebody is throwing sand in the umpire's eyes while he's trying to figure out what the hell happened. That's what lying does to the truth-seeking process. 
everybody who comes to the table, everybody who gets on the witness stand has to honor the, the oath to tell the truth because it's hard enough to figure out what happened when people are committed to telling the truth. Now, the, the realistic side of me, after practicing law for nearly two decades, realizes people lie out their asses all the time. Of course. But when you catch them, when you believe it, you don't just say, oh, well— Boys will be boys. Hey, look, he didn't want to get caught. Right. Yeah, you know, you never you never admit to anything, you know, like Ralphie. Yeah. The Christmas story. But he lied it's about something. It's always worse if you admit to it. Yeah. But it's yeah. pretty important. It's it goes important. to the heart of the case. And it's obvious. I, I think that's the other problem. It, it just, it seems like there is, you know, a ton of credible evidence to say, no, 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 we have multiple people who can, you know, reassure us that, erections were there we have multiple people who sent text messages or whatever to third parties we have multiple people who did not even accuse them uh, and are, are a part of the allegations like you said earlier that stuck up from that also said that 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 is a blatant lie i don't even think that's a lie it's not a fib it's like blatant it's you're right it's to the heart of the matter and that's where he loses credibility and i don't know mike I, you know i should have maybe looked this up I, you know we're trying to dive through a lot of stuff here but but i just uh, one thing I remember from the NFL playing in it, even some players going through, you know, incidents like this, and even me being a player rep for, for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at one time, the one thing that was always made clear in any procedure that I had to even be a part of as a third party or just even with other players is where they the NFL is makes it very clear that they don't want to be lied to, that, they, that you're going to get in worse trouble if we find out you're lying to us. And I know we've had some specific cases the last few years that have brought that up as well, and that's a very big, strong you know, point for them, which it should should be and I think that's this ultimately like you're saying here I think this is the one that's going to really hurt him uh in the favor of the owner's eyes and, and Roger Goodell and anybody else that's involved in this decision one of the reasons he was so aggressive about the Saints a decade ago was because they believed they were they, lying exactly by right Williams exactly Sean Payton right right the Tom Brady destroying the phone right. with the implausible I, you know, I, every time I get a new phone, I, you know, I throw my other one into the river. I'm, you know, I mean, it, it just they, they, they get upset and they should because it's again, it's hard enough to figure out what happens if people are telling you the straight story. Now, now, so you, you may be listening to this saying, well, why didn't he get 17 games from Sue Robinson? H here's the issue. It's not the facts. And see, Roger Goodell is bound by the facts at the next level, not by the application of the personal conduct policy to those facts. That's where he can say, I apply it in a different way. I respect your work, Judge Robinson, but I think it's more than six. I think it should be 17, for example. He's got enough facts to do whatever he wants. Where she parted ways with the NFL was on the question of what is referred to throughout the decision as nonviolent sexual assault. And we reported at the time the hearing was happening, there's no evidence of violence. There's no evidence of, you know, the traditional sexual assault that in involves some element of forcible right. misconduct. Yeah. So the issue is if the NFL is going to seek these extremely stringent punishments for nonviolent sexual assault, it's not something you can just pull out of thin air. That's her argument. You have to have notice. Yeah. If you're going to make a dramatic change of the rules, you have to have notice. You have to you have to make sure that everyone out there knows what they are expected their behavior to be and what the consequences for it will be. The only other case of nonviolent sexual assault involved a three-game suspension. I'm told that's the Jameis Winston assault of the Uber driver. And he had a history yeah. of allegations right. back to college, and he only got three games. Well, Deshaun Watson's got four allegations that ultimately were submitted and found to be credible, and he got six games. So, I mean, the NFL still thinking there should be more, but that's the, the third excerpt that I want to share with you from well, here. Mike, and let me just like let, – let, let's – Okay, okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Go I ahead. just well, I wanted to ask a quick question, and, you know, I know it's the four women – that were used for Judge Sue Robinson's, you know, uh, investigation here. But does she take into account, you know, all the other ones as well? No. I, mean, I know. No. Th th that's where I, that's I, I was disconnect. Like, I, I was just confused by that. That's the disconnect between court of public opinion yeah. 
and Court of Sue Robinson. Right. In the Court of Sue Robinson, all that matters is the evidence. So there were 24 lawsuits. The NFL talked to 12 people. Yeah. The NFL presented on behalf of four. Tried five, but as we've been saying, the fifth one was based on a media report. And she said, no, you got to have actual evidence. My understanding is the four individuals didn't actually testify at the hearing, but they had been interviewed by the NFL's investigators who have years of experience in investigating sexual assault cases. And their testimony was deemed as credible by Judge Robinson as to the, the information they found. But, but th- this was the key. And this is where the, the, the struggle between the league and Judge Robinson kind of really, I think, became most obvious. And here's the third excerpt we want to share from the decision. The NFL has recommended that Mr. Watson be suspended for at least the entire 2022 NFL regular postseason and not be permitted to return unless he satisfies any conditions imposed for reinstatement. According to the NFL, if this recommended sentence is unprecedented, as characterized by Watson in the NFL PA, that is because his conduct is unprecedented. And that's the NFL's argument. Yeah. Hey, look, how do we put people on notice that you're going to get a full season suspension yeah. if you are engaged in this habit slash fetish of getting private massages that you're trying to turn into sexual encounters and you got sued 24 times because of it. Right. How are we supposed to spell that out? Yeah, exactly. In the personal conduct policy. And, and Sue Robinson's position is you didn't spell it out enough with your precedent, your past practices. See, this is where Jeffrey Kessler went in and waved the magic wand and persuaded her based upon legal arguments that it's not consistent with past punishments. It's not a situation where fair notice was given to what the prohibited behavior is, and that's why you can't suspend Deshaun Watson for 17 games. That's why the NFLPA regards this as a victory. They believe they took a big pile of chicken you-know-what and made it into chicken salad because he did it. See, this is the difference between factual guilt and legal guilt. Plenty of people are factually guilty, but to ultimately pin on them what it is that you want to prove they did— and to get the punishment you want, that's a different issue altogether. In this case, the prosecutor failed. The NFL failed. The documents weren't strong enough. The past precedent wasn't strong enough. The lawyering wasn't strong enough. Because Kessler, on this point, was able to convince Sue Robinson not to go the full distance. But that's why an appeal becomes so powerful for the NFL. Yeah. Because the commissioner will be more inclined to look favorably on the arguments advanced by the lawyers he's hired right. to represent the interests of the NFL. Uh, uh, def- I mean, it, it, that that argument, you know, by Kessler and the NFL, I mean, seems thin to me. I mean, it does. Just as an innocent bystander sitting here and, and all of that, yeah, I mean, how are you? It is unprecedented what we're seeing here. We've never seen anything like this. How do you have the direct language in your, in, in, you know, in your CBA to, to address that? I mean, at some point, like, common sense just prevails. Oh, hey, wait, there was this many lawsuits. You could have gone to jail, and there's going to have been a lot of other issues. Well, I don't know. That's a pretty serious damn you know, subject here, subject matter. You know, so, and then, you know, to say it, it, it's, it's, you know, against anything we've seen before as far as the, you know, unprecedented suspension and all that, well, yeah, okay, so what? I mean, that, that doesn't mean anything to me either. Again, we've never seen this before either from a player. And, 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 and have this type of situation where, at the end of the day, I don't care what you think, guilty, not guilty, weird for sure. I, I don't care what side of the fence you are, fetish, weird, whatever, that's there. I mean, no doubt about it, but I just feel like that's pretty thin, and I think that's where we get back to the old story of conduct detrimental to the NFL, and that's what you're talking about, and Roger's going to come in and – um, I, I don't know. It almost, it almost, I almost feel like Mike, it's setting up for the NFL to come in and be the savior for the, like the, the public to a degree. Like, yeah, we've been, you know, a man's league forever. And we've had some issues along those lines, but look at this. Here we are making a strong statement and correcting this right here. I, I almost feel like that's what's going to happen. They're going to sweep in and save the day and it's going to benefit them. I think in the, in the, the public eye. There is a thread in the factual findings of Sue Robinson that if the commissioner pulls that thread enough, he could end up with a written decision 
that basically does what you're saying because she found that he did it. Yeah. She found that he was guilty. And I think that even though the NFLPA doing the fist pumps because they were happy with the lawyering that took this bad situation and kept it to only six games. I don't think they quite realized what they agreed to. I think they began to realize over the weekend what they agreed to because they put the statement out on Sunday night saying, hey, we'll accept Judge Robinson's decision and we call on the NFL to do the same thing. Well, folks, you shouldn't have given the NFL appeal power over Judge Robinson. She should have been the last word because – Whoever has the last word still has the most power. Yeah. When there's no standard there, we talked about this yesterday, there's no deference that's given to her legal finding. They just look at it and say, we don't agree with how you interpreted our policy. Yeah. I mean, the right. party that wrote the policy, the party that enforces the policy, the party that has every interest in making sure that the policy is a proper deterrence for other players out there is going to be the party that handles this appeal. It's crazy when you think of it, but the union agreed to it and they can get the paperwork ready and go to court all they want. The NFL will win the race to the courthouse because the NFL controls the starters pistol. Yeah. The, 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 the kid will be standing outside the clerk's office at the Southern district of New York with the paperwork ready to file. The moment that Roger Goodell drops the gavel and suspends Deshaun Watson a full season, if that's what it comes to, and they'll file the lawsuit in a place where they've already won. They've already gotten rulings that support the idea, hey, we have our own in-house system of justice that the union has agreed to, and we're just enforcing it. We're implementing it. And the union agreed to let the commissioner have final say. The union agreed to that. There are plenty of things that people criticize the union about for ways that I think are unfair, On this, it's pretty damn fair to say, hey, Union, what the hell were you doing agreeing to let Roger Goodell have final say on this? Because this decision gives him the roadmap to suspend Deshaun Watson a full year if he wants to. Well, I almost feel like that's why they, like, you you know, you talked about earlier in the show, like, they, you know, weren't sure if they were going to release it, and then they they did. You know, I, I, I just... I wonder if, you know, the light six-game suspension was part of them like, wait, this doesn't read like this. Let's put this out there. I think the public's going to go, whoa, this is crazy. Only six games with some of the stuff that's in here? So, in a way, I think it's already set up for Goodell and the NFL. They've already won in the, the court of public opinion. I don't know, Mike. I mean, I don't. you tell me. You're, you're more on social media a little bit more than I am, but I mean – you know, I go through it yesterday. I'm watching TV. Uh, I mean, I I, I got to think it was, you know, three out of every four, four out of every five people was, you know, pissed off or thought it was too light of a decision altogether. And it just it's uh, so from that standpoint, I think that's where Goodell's going to have a little freedom, and it, it's not going to be looked at too harshly if he adds more games on to to Watson. Again, 2014, Ray Rice, they were too lenient with him, and he almost lost his job over it. And that's not hyperbole. He almost was pushed out. There were real questions about whether or not Roger Goodell should still be the commissioner of the NFL. And people in ownership were like, hey, you know, we can find somebody else to steer the ship through open water. This guy drove the thing right into the rocks. Unforced error. Why did he only suspend this guy two games? And I think at that moment, Roger Goodell vowed to never be accused again of being too lenient with a player. And that's why Ezekiel Elliott got what he got. Yeah. And that's why I think that's why I think Deshaun Watson's going to get a lot more than six games when it's all said and yeah. done. That poll question that we had yesterday, 50,000 votes, 81% do not there agree. Yeah. 81%. Wait, how do we get 81% to agree on anything? We can't get 81% to agree that the earth is round for crying out loud. <laughs> yeah, I know. So, um, all right, a, a couple of other key points from the Judge Robinson decision and this goes to aggravating and mitigating factors because that can drive it up and that can drive it down and I think this was fascinating to me she in setting the six games yeah she noted that there are aggravating factors including his lack of expressed remorse yeah and the fact that he failed to notify the NFL of the first lawsuit mitigating factors were he's a first-time offender and he had an excellent reputation in his community prior to these events I I don't know that it's I, look I, I don't want to discount everything the guy did, but it's kind of like Mike Vick and his dog fighting for six years. Until we found out about it, 
yeah, Mike Vick's got a pretty good reputation. But then we find out he's been maintaining a dogfighting operation for six years. That tends to tarnish what we previously thought of Michael Vick. When we learn that Deshaun Watson's got this, this habit of preying upon social media massage therapists and trying to make private massages into sexual encounters, that kind of changes what you think of Deshaun Watson. I don't really care about the pre-existing uh, reputation agreed. at that point. Agreed. And how do you say he's a first-time offender when there's 24 allegations against him? Right, right. Which one's the first one? I, I hear you. You're right. I mean, how you know, did, how, did it happen a few times before and nothing happened? I mean, he was warned by people about his reputation, right? We have learned that throughout this process as well from other masseuses who are telling him, hey, you have a little reputation, you know, that was floating around. So, I don't know. Those community members obviously didn't think he was that great in the community. Uh, but I'm with you. I don't know. You're, you're right. Reputation kind of goes out the door a little bit. I don't mean to, like, totally dis discredit it. I know he has done some good things for the community in a lot of ways. But, yeah, it's lessened by current events. It is. You know, now you, you go down the... You go down the wormhole of, oh, maybe he was doing that because he was feeling guilty for this or whatever. But the reputation's been damaged. And, yeah, I don't think of past Deshaun Watson the same way, uh, you know, as I used to anyways. Uh, you're right. I, it, it, has no, it has no, you know, what do I want to say, solid ground, at least in, in my opinion. I just, I just don't know how that is a straight-faced mitigating factor when you're going to – if you're going to ignore the fact – because it's not evidence that there are 24 lawsuits against him. I, I just, if you're going to look at aggravating and mitigating factors, I'd like to think that for that purpose, you know, okay, I'm not going to consider 24 lawsuits for the purposes of deciding whether he did it as to the four that are presented to me. But when I'm identifying mitigating and aggravating factors, I'm not going to say this guy's otherwise pristine when I know there's 20 other claims against him. Yeah. And the New York Times has reported there's 66 of these women that he set up the private massages with. And uh, Tony Busby has alleged that there were more than 100 by the time it was all said and done. So it's hard for me. You know, you can't put the blinders on. Right. If you're going to start if you're going to start saying this guy's got an excellent reputation, he's a first time offender. If you're going to deliberately ignore what else is out there, that, that's just, there's something weird about that to me. And it's hard to reconcile with what we know. Well, yeah, his what prior reputation upon... is what we're saying is fake. It just seems yeah. fake. I mean, you know, yeah. Okay, yeah, he was good in the public eye, but we don't know really what he was doing behind closed doors or when he was in his own time, and that's certainly taken a blow there to where, yeah, the reputation seems like, even though we thought it was good then, was flawed. No doubt about it. And, and my point is you can't make these broad brush proclamations about Deshaun Watson and pretend that the stuff that wasn't part of the – draw the box around the evidence. This is the evidence. But there's other stuff out there that, that, that you're just not paying attention. That just, there's something about that that doesn't sit well with Well, me. let me ask you this well real quick, too. Just because just just I know you're about to go into it. Just, but I, I, there were, I saw you know, some people, too, arguing that you know, it might not look good for the NFL to upstage you know, Judge Sue Robinson and her decision as well. And, like, uh, you know, I just w – what's your thought on that? I, I, I get what they're saying. I get it. But like you said yesterday, judges are used to having a bigger or higher up judge, you know, overturn their, their rulings all the time, let alone, okay, yeah, maybe a few people might be offended by he overturned, you know, a female judge's opinion here. But I think there's going to be more females out there that are going to go, well, I'm glad that he went stricter or, or more forceful here as well. But I heard that argument being used a lot yesterday, too, which I didn't necessarily agree with. This 16-page decision gives him everything he needs to write a ruling that and, – and he's required to put it in writing. He's required to, to reduce it to words on paper. He has enough from this that, that he can respect her work, respect her effort to interpret the personal conduct policy and, and respectfully disagree with it. It's, it's there because he's not throwing out her factual findings. He's embracing her factual findings. She got it right, right. on her factual findings. It's her application of the personal conduct policy to those facts that he's going to part ways with her on. And, and it will be, if they're smart, it will be a very positive kid glove type of a of a way of disagreeing with her gently disagreeing with yeah, her right but ultimately disagreeing and right she, she was she was not gentle in this observation she made about the nfl at the conclusion to her 
written decision. The NFL may be a forward-facing organization, but it is not necessarily a forward-looking one. Just as the NFL responded to violent conduct after a public outcry, that's a reference to the Ray Rice case, so it seems the NFL is responding to yet another public outcry about Mr. Watson's conduct. At least in the former situation, the policy was changed and applied proactively. Here, the NFL is attempting to impose a more dramatic shift in its culture without the benefit of fair notice to and consistency of consequence for those in the NFL subject to the policy. Basically, what she's saying is, and she's got it right here, Chris. She's got it right. She's pegged the NFL. She may have limited experience in NFL matters, but she figured out one thing right away. They make it up as they go. Yeah. On everything. Right. On everything. There is never proactive thought it is always reactive thought it's always oh wait we didn't we didn't think of this so let's go ahead and deal with that situation then we'll change the rules later that happens all the time in the nfl no doubt probably happens in other organizations too but she she hit that the nail on the head with the hammer with that one it's absolutely right but and the appeal goes to the guy who's in charge of the organization that makes it up as it goes. So, I know. again, what's he going to do? He's going to make it up as he goes. But, I, I, you know, again, I, you know, I, I understand some of that language, and she is right about that. I mean, we've been frustrated about the NFL and how they make it up But it's it not going to shame him into it's, stopping. No, it's no not going to shame him no, into stopping. He's still going to do it. No, exactly right. It's, there's no way. I mean, it's, it's almost like, you know, I don't know. Sometimes I feel like this kind of stuff emboldens them a little bit more to be like, no, we're the all and mighty powerful NFL you don't know as much as we do. Uh, I mean, yes, there is that. I think the other other part, maybe I disagree a little bit with maybe some of the language there. And, like, I understand the lack of consistency for consequence there. But I think if you ask most people in the NFL, hey, you know, most players, let's just say, you know, what do you think might happen to you if you got, you know, 24 sexual allegations against you in, this, in the civil court? What do you think would happen? Most players are going to sit there and go, oh, man, I don't know. I'm, I might be done forever. I'm going to be suspended for a year, two years. I don't. I mean, no one would be going, well, I, I'd probably only get four games because it's inconsistent with the prior policies. Like, this is one where a little, again, it's a little common sense to go, like, what? That many people? Whoa, this is crazy. Yeah, okay, that's going to be some crazy punishment to go along with it, too. I mean, it is. We've never seen anything like this. And not only ever seen anything like this, it is never seen anything like this, period. And then you add on, this is one of the, uh, before this, what? What do you think? One of the 10 most popular players in the NFL? Definitely one of the 10 best five. players. Yeah, maybe five, right. So, and one of the five best quarterbacks in football. So that even adds more to it to make it more complicated for the NFL. And like we were saying yesterday a little bit, you know, yeah, this is delicate too. This guy's going to be on TV for four hours. But, you know, just it's him, Deshaun Watson. And then he's going to get interviewed. And if he plays good, he's going to get praised. And, you know, it's just going to – it's not going to look right. And I think that's what the NFL is going to have to be very sensitive to here when Goodell makes this decision. Here's the bottom line, though. And this is why the NFL wants to have final say in situations like this. And this is why the NFL resents any effort by any outsiders to have any control over the NFL's business. The NFL wants to decide in each given situation that falls into its radar where action is required. It wants to decide what is right in that situation without regard to precedent, without regard to consistency, without regard to to whether it's spelled out chapter and verse in the rules that the players don't even know about. They want to decide case by case what's right, and they don't want to hear, yeah, but that's different from what you did with this guy. Oh, but this is different from what you did with that guy. They just want to decide each case what we think is right, and they want to be the ones to make the decision. They know their business better than anyone else, and they get pissed when you try to tell them, how to run their business. So my point is, this is all leading to the commissioner taking full advantage of the power that the NFLPA vested in the commissioner to be the one to say, sorry, in this case, given these facts, 
these unprecedented facts that any rational, reasonable person would know would put someone in jeopardy for a significant punishment by the NFL, an employer that has the right, thanks to the union, to police the private lives of players. And as Judge Robinson found, he's setting up these massages, not saying I'm Deshaun Watson, private citizen that no one knows about. I'm the quarterback of the Houston Texans and I need a massage. He's using the shield as part of the pretext for setting these up. I'm telling you, Chris, the more we talk this through, yeah, and that's one of the reasons I love year. doing this show, yeah. I, I, I think we need to get ready for a significant increase in the suspension, and I'm not going to be surprised if Roger Goodell decides to make it a year. And he's there's no the, – here's the only downside. The only downside. The threat slash promise by the NFL Players Association to take this to court. And we talked about that already. It's easy to win the race to the courthouse when you control the starter's pistol. They'll file a, an action seeking a declaratory judgment in the Southern District of New York, basically saying we know that they're going to fight us on this. We're the ones filing the lawsuit to defend this ruling. And I think they'll win based upon the Brady precedent and the Elliott precedent because, again, judges don't want to get involved. And judges are going to say, hey, union, you agreed to this. Don't, don't come crying to us in the black robes because you agreed to let Roger Goodell have final say over the appeal. He's bound by the facts. What are the facts? She found he did it. He's not bound by her reasoning as to what the punishment should be after she finds that he did it. I, I, I hear you. I, I'm going to have I, – I, I, I would be stunned if there's any other outcome than that. And, and, but but here's, the, here's, the, here's the one thing. We talked about this yesterday. As he's calling around to the five or six owners that really run the league – there's still a chance Robert Kraft and Jerry Jones are going to say, we'd like this to, I don't want to get dragged into this, but I will say this. There's just a mention in a footnote about the, the treatment of owners and players because she focused so much more on the fact that they're trying to apply the personal conduct policy in an unprecedented way without giving notice to the players. That was the thrust of her argument. Right. It's, it's like she didn't even get to, this idea of apples to apples comparisons between owners and players, because there is no apples to apples comparison. I think that's kind of implicit in this. What Robert Kraft was accused of was incredibly different. It was a similar totally. context, but it's incredibly different. No allegation of force, no, no allegation of sexual assault. There's a place no that was doing that trying. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, it was. They were expecting was, erections was nothing, at the end of the massage. Sorry. There, there to say was that. nothing. Yeah. And I, there was nothing for craft to right. try to get someone who didn't want to do it to do right so it's incredibly different and and you know what craft could read this and say i'm comfortable with the possibility of getting dragged Maybe. into a right federal action because uh, i was He's already non-issue. been embarrassed yeah he, he came he came out of this thing unscathed yeah so i i i just well, 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 sorry. So Knowing what I know of Roger Goodell and the National Football League, it will be a it will be a shock to me if they don't take full advantage of this power and suspend Deshaun Watson for a full year. I'm not saying they should. I'm just saying, based upon watching and monitoring and writing about and talking about and thinking yeah. about the way this business does its business for 20 years, it it does not take a whole lot of thought and analysis for me to come to the conclusion that he's getting a year. Yeah, I, 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 I do. I don't know if I agree with the year, but I think definitely something significant as far as a bump up in the the games are suspended there. You know, Mike. And there, one other thing I want to ask you. You know, just like, do you think that any part of this decision from Goodell and, of course, the owners that we're discussing here is also going to be a little bit of like, you know, yeah, we need to suspend him because we need to teach like other owners and Jimmy Haslam that, you know, this is just not the right approach. When a guy has this type of situation, we don't give him like the greatest contract in the history of football. Do you think that plays into this at all? Like almost kind of penalizing Cleveland for, for doing this when they probably know they shouldn't have and they forced themselves into this issue? Hey, that's one of the benefits of making it up as you go. That's yeah. one of the benefits of making decisions about one specific case without regard to precedent or consistency. If there are messages you want to send as part of the one case that happens to be in front of you now, you can bake those messages into whatever the final decision is. Now, they're not going to come out and say it, but that may be part of it. And hey, Chris, that's why I don't rule out the mixed bag approach that we talked about yesterday. Right. 
where he gets fined $10 million because he was fined nothing as a result of yesterday, and he's only going to lose 345000 in salary thanks to the contract that he was given by Jimmy Haslam and the Browns. Yeah. But, but, but you know, th- th- maybe, it, maybe it's 12 and you have to pay the $10 million back that you earned last year when you weren't playing – not because cause I've seen people say, and folks, well, yes, get into this because I think this sense. is another important thing. Let's apply thing here. common sense yeah. here. I, I've seen people who are supposedly smart say that last year wasn't a de facto suspension, and the only reason he didn't play is because he didn't want to play. He would have played for the Dolphins last year if there weren't the 24, and at the time it was 22, off field issues, the possibility of a criminal case. And the reality that the NFL was eventually going to take this up and do something about it. He would have been traded to the Dolphins Labor Day weekend at the latest. The only reason it didn't happen yeah. was because of, of the lawsuits. Right. Stephen Ross wanted the lawsuit settled as a condition to doing the trade. He would have played last year. He didn't play last year because of this issue. That, 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 he wasn't playing for the Texans regardless. Right, right. But he would have played football in the NFL last year but for these issues. Right. Well, then, See, that to me is a, it's an important thing. It, it is an important thing. One, again, the optics here. All the women, yes, got $10 million last year. What was the signing bonus he got this year? $46 million? What, what was the signing bonus he $45 got? $45 million. $45 million. So he's made $55 million with 24 civil suits, and I know he hasn't played football. That just doesn't look right, period. Let alone, I don't agree with the argument of he served his time last year. I, 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 I used to be like a little on the fence with that, and I'm not sure. But as we've gone through this process, I go, no, no, no. You kind of explained it. I just want to kind of piggyback on that. He told the Texans he didn't want to play for them. He wanted out of there. He wanted to go somewhere else. Then this happened, okay? And all this started to come out. And like you said, you know, at that point, he wasn't suspended. There was no issue. It was still an ongoing investigation. But he didn't play last year, not because he wasn't because he was suspended or anything like that. He didn't play last year because of his actions. Again, it's it's his accountability here. It's it's just not the NFL. He would have played last year, of course, if he didn't have these issues. But there was a number of issues that he caused, and it wasn't an official suspension. So that's where I don't like don't necessarily agree with, oh, he served his time last year. No, I, I don't think he did, and especially not when you get $10 million on it. And, you know, yes, when you're making demands about where you want to play and where you want to go, and then that comes out, yeah, nobody wants you to play for them. I mean, nobody. So that wasn't a suspension. That was a, that was a hey, I don't know if we want this freaking guy on our team. That's all that was. It wasn't a suspension. But, so I don't like right. that always. But, yeah, go ahead. But, but, but I think the overlap here is yeah. this, Chris, because there are people who are saying that it was completely unrelated to any of this stuff. It was just an impasse with the Texans. My point is if the commissioner wants to do this, yeah. you can fine him $10 million for last year, treating it as – if he were on paid leave because of all of this stuff, because that's the way the CBA is set up. Right. And that was the kind of light bulb that flashed for me when I saw in the CBA that if you do put a guy on the commissioner exempt list, let's say he's on the commissioner exempt list for a year, and then after the fact he's suspended without pay, he gets credit for the time that he spent on the commissioner exempt list. He just has to give back the money that he was paid while he was on paid leave. So if you're on paid leave for a year, you ultimately get suspended 12 games, you give up your pay for 12 games, and you're back. You're good to go. Yeah. And I think that's important because, because that is a way for Goodell to not make him sit out all of 2022 right. and a way for him to give back some of the millions that maybe – some of the more powerful owners in the NFL who don't like what Jimmy Haslam has done by turning the structure upside down with this contract for a guy who's had all these allegations, that's a way to recapture some of that money. Right. So uh, Goodell can do whatever he can do whatever he wants to do. If he wants to sit him out the whole year, he'll sit him out the whole year. If he wants to say six games plus you pay back every penny you made from last year, he can do that. My point is he's going to do something beyond six games. I, I am convinced of that. I'm with they you will there. appeal. And, and he will impose a significant punishment. Uh, but because they asked for a full season, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take them at their word. The NFL asked for a full season. I'm going to assume that he's going to be most inclined to sit him out for a full season. 
Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.